the unit circle. This is a massive idea, really big. There's a few moving parts that you've got to wrap your head around, and it's really important that you start to get the hang of this pretty early on. So settle in, take some notes, and try to absorb all of this. So we're going to start over here, a Cartesian plane. Now you're used to a Cartesian plane, an x-axis, a y-axis. Now we're going to draw a circle on our Cartesian plane. This is the unit circle. Now, the unit circle has a center at the origin, at 0, 0, and you can see that it has a radius of 1. It's called the unit circle because its radius is 1 unit. Your little notes here, sits on a Cartesian plane, center at 0, 0, radius is equal to 1, and it looks like that, an x-axis, a y-axis, and passes through 1, 1, negative 1, and negative 1. Now, we're going to put a point on our circle right here, and we're going to start rotating the point anti-clockwise. Now, when I do that, you can see this angle appear here. Now, when we're dealing with unit circles and angles, we always do it in this way. We always start here at point 1-0, and we rotate anti-clockwise. So that's 68 degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 138 degrees. This is 216 degrees, and this is 342 degrees. So that we can refer to things in our circle, we have quadrant names. This is called quadrant 1 from 0 to 90 degrees. This is called quadrant 2 from 90 to 180 degrees. This is called quadrant 3 from 180 to 270, and quadrant 4 from 270 to 360. So, a question I might ask you, what quadrant is 230 degrees in? So, looking at your unit circle, let's draw another one. You'll get real fast at drawing unit circles. You could say, okay, start here, rotate, that's 90 degrees, rotate some more, that's 180 degrees, rotate some more, another 50 degrees, and you'll be here. Okay, so it looks like 230 degrees is this angle here, which means that we're in quadrant 3. Now, back to our unit circle. Remember, we're on a Cartesian plane. It's a circle on a Cartesian plane, which means that this point has coordinates. At the moment, this point is 0 0.79, 0 0.61. As I rotate, you can see that this, ang this coordinate changes. Okay, now we're negative 0 0.86, 0 0.5. And as we rotate, it changes. In other words, the coordinate of this depends upon this angle here. The angle and the coordinate are related in some way. And the way that they're related is through trigonometry. And you'd be right to say, wait a minute, trigonometry? Trigonometry is about triangles. I don't see any triangles. So let's build ourselves a triangle. A little red dotted line along here. A little blue dotted line along here. And a right angle in here. And now it's pretty obvious that we have a nice right angle triangle. But how is this coordinate related to this angle? Well, here's our same picture again, but I've pulled out the exact coordinates. Let's just call them X and Y coordinates. And I've pulled out the angle, because we're just going to call the angle theta. Now, we can use trigonometry here. We can say that cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, theta is here, adjacent side is this one right here, that's the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is right there. Now, I can rearrange this to find out what the adjacent side is. I can say that h times cos theta is equal to the adjacent side. That's pretty good, because that means that the length of this red line is equal to h cos theta. But we can go one better than that. Because this is a unit circle with a radius of 1, that means that the hypotenuse is equal to the number 1, which means that our h value is equal to the number 1, and 1 cos theta is just theta. So that means that a equals cos theta. This length here, this red length, is equal to cos theta, which means that this x-coordinate is equal to cos theta. That's really, really cool. Now, we can do an identical thing with this blue line here. 
we can say that sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Remember, we know that the hypotenuse is equal to the number 1, which means that sine theta equals the opposite side. This blue length is equal to sine theta, which means that this coordinate is equal to sine theta. This is the important part of the unit circle. The way that this angle is related to this coordinate is that cos 38.89 is the x coordinate and sine 38.89 is the y coordinate. And those are equal to 0 0.78 and 0 0.63. And it doesn't matter where I move this around to, it's always going to be the case that the x coordinate is equal to cosine of that angle and sine of that angle. To be really, really general about it, because that's what we want, the coordinates of this dot are cos theta, sine theta. That is the super, super important part of this. And now that we've done that, now that we've drawn a Cartesian plane with a unit circle on it, we can actually use this to guess, guesstimate, estimate what the angle and cos theta is equal to. So if I say, what do you think uh, cos 30 degrees is, you'll be able to tell me, well, cos 30 degrees on the unit circle looks like this. The x coordinate at that point is about 0 0.84. So I'm guessing that cos 30 degrees is about 0 0.84. Let's see if I'm right. 0 0.87, not bad, not bad guess. I'm guessing, let's move to another one over here. Okay, cos, uh, let's do sine theta. We're at 77.92 degrees here. Sine 77.92 degrees, we're looking at the y coordinate now. I'm guessing that sine 77.92 degrees is about 0 0.99. Let's see if I'm right. 0 0.98, not bad. So that's pretty good because I can use this neat little picture to estimate what the values of cos theta and sine theta are for any angle from 0 to 90 degrees. Now, I'm going to make a part 2 here where we take a look at quadrant 2, 3, and 4 because they are related to quadrant 1 and I want to spend a little bit of time focusing on how they're related to quadrant 1. See you in part two.